Any questions? Remember what we were we were, were putting together. Now these these two things that what we've done in the week before with the normal stresses on beams uh, doesn't matter what the loading is. Doesn't we always almost always put the loading down, but it doesn't need to be. It's whatever the loading is. Uh, we just tend to do it this way because one that's more natural way for support beams to be. That's certainly what almost all the beams in this building are doing. They're loaded from above, and so they will bend in the way we've been looking at. Uh, but we've been looking, the, the two weeks before this, we looked at the normal stresses in the X direction mm -hmm. uh, using that. And yesterday, we add to the fact that since we've got shear stresses across the beam, that that even causes shear stresses down the, the length of the beam. We started looking at that yesterday. And that was uh, a direct um, uh, factor of that shear. That's what that V is. But then very much like the normal stresses, everything else is really a consequence of the geometry. That's what uh, the, certainly the Y is. It's the distance up or down the beam from the, cro uh, from the neutral axis. Q is, uh, well, we'll review that in just a second. And then both of them have to do with the, the uh, moment of inertia of the cross section, whatever its shape. That's what the I is. It's the same I for both of these. And then, remember what T was? Uh, the cross-sectional width at the point of intersection. And I want to just review that for a little bit. Um, we're looking at various cross-sections here now that we're looking at these shear stresses because what it gives us is an idea of what kind of uh, what kind of shear stresses there are that are going to try to take this beam apart, uh, mostly at these places of intersection. If we were building a simple plate I beam like this, you would stack up these three plates and you weld it at those junctions right there, in the hope that that would hold that beam together as it bent. Because if those were not, if we weren't careful enough, then the beam would actually split apart at those different places. I guess it wouldn't look like that. It would get longer at those places. It would get shorter. But the point being that if we don't carefully weld it along there, then we lose all of the structural integrity of having those three things together. All we're getting then is, is uh, some additional bending support just because I goes up here, but we're not getting any additional support from avoiding the shear stresses or, or reducing the shear stresses by attaching these different plates together so that we can withstand that shear. And so we... Uh, look at what are the shear stresses at these interfaces. There's a little bit of welding buildup. Typically that's not counted in the calculation itself. It's a little difficult to know just what that is. Plus, what this this Q of concern is, uh, is the area above, the, uh, the area from the neutral axis beyond beyond the neutral axis, above that interface. So for these two interfaces, the Q is built, is calculated on that area beyond those interfaces, beyond where we're calculating those shear stresses. There's lots of different types of beams. Um, it's not uncommon to take an I-beam 
which actually looks something like that in profile. They're they're a little bit rounded because they're uh, they're either molded or extruded. Uh, it's not uncommon to take something like that and then add another beam to it. for extra strength and then maybe even rivet through there. To add strength to it, maybe do that on the bottom, maybe not. It depends upon where that beam is, just what is needed, it what you need it to do. But then again, the interface here where we do this calculation of the shear stress is, is right there. And we take the area beyond that, which in this case is that entire channel cross section, even including those, those little lips down there. But it's everything beyond the interface above the neutral axis. Where we, uh, where we do this calculation of this Q. Remember, that's the, the, the first moment of area of the, uh, of the area beyond the interface. So it's pretty obvious with these ones. It may not be as obvious with this one that you just also include these, these little uh, uh, lips over. Uh, that's usually pretty easy if these are stock and standard channel beams that you've riveted on there because the manufacturer will give you the moment of inertia of those areas and the Q and T, the thickness, which in this case is the, uh, the interface thickness of the interface itself. What's maybe not so obvious is another type of built up beam and we'll do this one out of wood. Um, maybe make a beam that's uh, perhaps a box beam could be just a beam like that but usually it's it's finished off where we have wood as all these pieces maybe plywood on these outer pieces might be somewhat decorative might not. Is that a hand up, Jake? No. By symmetry, we were in, you know where the neutral axis is. So now the the uh, the fasteners we put in there, maybe screws or nails and or glue. The interfaces of concern are going to be then these ones here. And we want to figure out what the shear stresses is along those planes. Make sure that the, we put in enough nails and or big enough nails or screws to, uh, to withstand those shear stresses. Then the Q calculation is based upon these areas here. The areas enclosed by our shear interfaces. So that one's not, not quite as obvious uh, what area is used for Q as the as other two examples are. So we'll do uh, a couple problems, work through those. One to kind of get us warmed up and going. And then a, another one to uh, actually look at that type of thing that we have there. So we'll take a, a sort of a semi I beam uh, shape, uh, at least non symmetric top to bottom. We'll use. It's very simply loaded. We've gone through lots and lots of that kind of stuff, figuring out what the. Uh, shear in the moment and R and the reactions, all that. We still need that kind of stuff. So 
We'll put two 1.5 kilonewton loads there. So it's uh, maybe something like uh, uh, maybe a grand piano or something you're trying to support. So it's on its two legs at that point. Symmetrically loaded just to keep things simple so we can focus on the new stuff. 0.4 meters from each end and two meters between the two. And we want to find out what the uh, what the average what the average shear stress is. So that's the type of thing we're looking at before. The cross section we we'll use for this is a little bit different, kind of like an I beam. Just the lower flange is uh, a little bit narrower for whatever reason. With all dimensions here in millimeters, so 100 there, 20 there, 80 uh, height on that web, and then 60 and 20 down here. Remember the purpose uh, uh, or the uh, the uh, the, the uh, benefit of these I-beam type things is this greater area that's farther away from the neutral axis increases the moment of inertia. That increase, if we can increase the moment of inertia since it's on the bottom, that decreases the stresses that we've been calculating, both normal and and uh, shear stresses that we've been calculating the last couple uh, weeks here. So I want to find shear stress at two places. Both here, we'll call that A, for reference, and here, we'll call that B. want to find the shear stress at both of those places. Just to speed things up a little bit, I'll give you the location of the neutral axis. From the bottom, it's 68.3 millimeters. Remember, though, uh, you'll be expected to find those type of things, but we've done that for several weeks, so I don't want to uh, belabor that point now when there's some other things we can look at. The moment of inertia is 8.63 times 10 to the minus 6, not 4. Minus 6 meters to the 4th. So I'd like you to find the uh, average shear stress. That's the same thing as this XY that we've seen. Find it uh, at some place along here, uh, or equivalently on the other side. You should uh, should almost instantly know what the shear is across there. Remember, we need to know what the shear load is uh, in the in the beam itself. These internal shear loads. That's what we're, causes the shear stresses, and that's what we're trying to protect against. Those are both yeah, both loads are. So you should uh, almost instantly know what the uh, reactions are. Should even be able to picture the uh, the uh, shear diagram in your head, and you'll see that it's maximum shear on these two outer parts. In fact, if somebody wants to volunteer to find the average shear stress in this middle part. It's, ah, you win. That's why you're my favorite student. Oh, see, Bobby left so I could say that. Oh, no, it's on tape, darn it. Hi, Bob. By the way, this, this quantity, VQ, 
over I itself is what's known as the shear flow. It, uh, it has characteristics of it very much like fluid flow through a channel. Uh, I myself don't see that comparison. I've looked at it through all the books, have a background in fluid mechanics. I don't see how that looks like a flow, but the, these mechanics guys who do this stuff evidently do. All right, so just putting into practice some of the things we saw yesterday for two different spots in the beam. So really all you need to come up with is what the shear is, and I hope you're all ready for that. Uh, and then you need Q for the two different spots. You'll need a QA and a QB. That's all the difference between these two calculations. Is T the width of the surface between the two or of the cross-sectional bump that we're looking to do? T is this little distance here where the shear stress is happening. Oh, so I don't know if it's apparent. So that that is this thickness here, which is the same as the other ones, is 20. That's what you use for the T. So this is mostly just a practice in calculating Q. Make sure you know what uh, you're doing with each of those. So 
Well, there's your shear diagram. And now your question is answered, isn't it? Yep, definitely. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. We'll... If Bobby can tolerate you in class, I can. <laughs> you know, in class, there's always a student somewhere holding you back, right, Bob? If at work, there's be a, another employee holding you back. You get married, there's another adult in the household who's holding you back. If you have more than one kid, at least one of them will hold you back. It's just, it's just life, man. You got to deal with it. Thank you. 
it kind of like looking at the videos themselves? It's all out of focus. Are you feeling okay? Just sleepy? Oh, yeah. When did you go to bed? Ever? Last night? Yes. Late? Yeah. Well, late for an adult like me or late for a young punk like you? 2? 2 a.m.? Yeah. What were you doing until 2 a.m.? Anything but going to bed. What? Homework for me? All right. I should have some kind of thing. They should have some kind of thing on Angel. Would you have to log in every half hour so I know how late I'm keeping you up? Then I can get up in the morning, check the logs. <laughs> yeah. Got their life screwed up. I own these suckers. So, check the cues. How are we doing on those? That's the only thing you need to check, I think. Everything else is pretty much done. Nobody wants to check them? You got them? You agreed? Perfectly? Colin, okay? Yep. Yep. Go away, Nanny. Yep. Jake, what'd you have for QA? Uh, 8.34 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay. Close to what I had. Meters. Q. That's why it's I am. No, wait, I don't have eight. I have 83 points. I think you wrote down your I again. Huh? No, let me check. Let me check. Uh, oh, you got 83. Okay, never mind. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, 83. Yep. And then for QB, what somebody have? 6.906 times 10 to the Okay. 7 times 10 to the minus 6th. And then the rest is just stick in and calculate. So, just to finish it, something like how many kilopascals? Yeah, I had 726. And for the lower part, yeah. All right, so let's do uh, a slightly different one, a little bit more involved now that we're warmed up. <laughs> oh, well. That's teaching, trying to pierce that impenetrable fog. All right, so here's, here's the beam du jour. Obviously made out of wood. Why else would I bring out the brown chalk? Uh, oops. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Measure twice. Cut once, that's what we always say. There we go. You think it's not Monday? Why? What happened Monday? We're getting sketchy. Couple planks of wood. Uh, the side ones are 30 by 150 millimeters. The inside one is 250 by 30.
the shear expected at this point eight hundred newtons and the spacing between the nails what color are nails? I guess they're blue So you're going to have to go back to yesterday and bring that back. That's 100 millimeters. Each nail diameter is 2 millimeters. Find the average shear stress, shear stress in each nail. That's going to be the, the delta H business we calculated yesterday. That itself is related to this shear flow that we had. on this one because I'm not going to give you I and where the neutral axis is, both of which you need. We don't need it on here because we're, 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 all we need is the shear flow, the, the delta act, H. Delta X is given, that's the spacing between the nails, and so we only need this delta H. This one we don't have to need that little T. Which is okay, remember that's the distance across the thickness of the beam, and this is a different shape beam put together in different ways.
first you simply have to find uh, the moment of inertia and Q. numbers to check with anybody? You know, from your experience, it's going to be a little bit closer to the top than it is the bottom. I hope you know that. They can check your numbers when they come out. It should be less than 75 millimeters from the top edge. Right, Bob, was it?
pieces. should be the next thing to check. That comes from the Y bar. We're going to use the parallel axis there with respect to that. Without that, as long as you have Y bar okay, you can do Q, but yeah, same as I got. So alright, that's good. So then your next question I'll leave for one of your classmates to help you answer. Did you come in a little bit late? Well, you went out for a second. I wonder if I covered it when you went out. Because I talked about this, this particular shape. Okay, sorry.
cross-section. the next thing to check. Thank 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, Q has a different Y bar. Uh, maybe you want to call it Y bar prime or Y bar Q or something just to keep them separate from the first Y bar we calculated. Once you know what the neutral axis is, then everything's measured from there. Okay, Pat, stuck? Yeah. On what? Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Colin, your numbers checking out? You got the same cube as others? Yeah. You the same problem. Well, I did learn from the bottom. Yeah, but once you've found where the neutral axis is, you don't use any measurements from the bottom anymore. Every measurement then is from the neutral axis. Once you know where the neutral axis is, that's your reference point. And that's not an arbitrary one. When you choose to do a reference from the top or the bottom, that's perfectly fine your choice. But once you know where the neutral axis is, everything's measured from there. That white bar prime. Can we think of that as like the D value in that parallel axis theorem? Yeah, that's good. Well, yeah, kind of. It's, it's the distance to the centroid of your Q area, or no, that's not, we called it, the, remember that big script A, yeah. the centroid of that area is from the distance from the neutral axis, which is like D, okay. but you don't do the parallel axis theorem on this, okay. yeah. but it is the same thing, thing you would have used, same number. Exactly the same number. Got it? Check final numbers. Huh? No. No. You're very close. You're, you're forgetting. The thing you're forgetting is is is. So all you, there's what you figured out is the total shear, but there's nails on each side. So you have to divide that in half because each side takes one half of that. So you should just use a point. Okay, end of time. So we can check. Let me put up some of the intermediate numbers, make sure you got them. I, uh, 32.2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. Q. Double check those if you didn't quite get to that. 